What is going on, boys and girls, and welcome back to another very exciting video on the channel, one that I've been waiting to do here for a couple weeks. Kind of got a rare day off, as you guys can see. The weather is beautiful now at three o'clock in the afternoon, but it was not so nice this morning. We finally got some much needed rain that we've been waiting for for a long time, but coupled with 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, we went ahead and rescheduled my guide trip this morning, but that's gonna give me the opportunity to finally get my second live scope installed in the back of the boat. I know that having two live scopes in the boat is not practical for the weekend fishermen or just the uh, regular old guy, but being a full-time fishing guide, it's pretty tough to get three or four people piled up in the front, all crowding up there to try and see their jig and uh, get everybody fishing off one live scope. So it's obviously only the smart thing to do to get the second one in the back. So in the meantime here, uh, last week, one night last week, which I did not film, we went ahead and got all the cables ran from both of these graphs. Well, I should just say one graph, but all my echo maps are talking to each other. We got everything hooked up and then ran all the way along the gunnels here back to where the back of the boat batteries are living. So the second black box here is gonna be hooked up to my old uh, 45 amp hour Miller Tech lithium battery. 45 amp hour is gonna be plenty to just power the black box guy right here because those two graphs right there at the console are powered by the 125 amp hour Militech starting battery. So we're gonna have plenty of juice to just run the uh, the black box here. And then what we're gonna have to do is just take the transducer cable. There's another port hole right here, a little access hole that we're gonna have to run through and then probably poke a hole right about here to get that transducer wire up through here. And then the second sea light pole is gonna run right along the starboard side on the gunner right there, really not looking forward to drilling holes in the boat, just like every other boat owner in this world, but gotta do what we gotta do because I do not have a track system. So yeah, from there, we've got both of these graphs networked to each other. So I think right now, the data cable is plugged into the 106 on the left, but because these guys are networked with the other echo map in the front, uh, we can run live scope on the 126 and the 106. We can run them both or just one, but those are all rigged and ready to go. So literally from here, it's just gonna be getting everything installed and uh, it should be plug and play. And then I guess if we're gonna talk accessories, things that we need, we'll just have to dig into my very old box right here, a box that every uh, Garmin owner should probably hopefully have if they've had enough units, but this is just all my extra stuff we've got tons of cables, transducer mounts, just all the very ex various accessories that Garmin stuff comes with. I mean, that's like seven years of extra, but we're gonna need one of these guys right here. That's a little uh, cable situation where you just pop that in whatever hole you drill, make it look nice and neat. So we're gonna need that guy, and then we're gonna need this guy too. We just happen to have an extra zero degree pole mount for the 32. I guess that is one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, in the front, I'm running the LVS 34, but in the back, we are just gonna be running the good old 32. That's just fine by me because I had to pay literally nothing for it. Just had to get the extra black box, but yep, I think we've got everything here. So now we're just gonna maybe potentially like every electronics installer should probably do is make a drink and just get to it. So hope you guys enjoy this one. I know install videos are not my uh, forte, but the ones that I've done on this channel have done really well and you guys have all responded. They've gotten shared loads of times and they seem to really help everyone, especially who's just getting into live scope. So hoping this one will help you guys if you're installing live scope for the first time or if you're like me and putting a second one in. We'll see how things go. This one's all gonna be new to me. I'm just glad that I already got the hard and frustrating part done of running wires from the console to the back of the boat because I tend to swear a lot when we do that. Anyway, that's enough talking. We're gonna go make a nice bourbon drink here and uh, get started. All right, well, I guess first step in the process here, rolling with the hat cam is getting the second sea light out and make sure we've got everything that we need. Oh yeah. The brand new one, you guys can see if you guys have had a sea light pull before they've changed up the branding a little bit. So I think what I might do, since I'm already kind of in here, is swap the fresh guy out with this one and then move that one back to the back. But that's gonna be where the whole situation mounts to, right there. Get the pole out here itself. Just like you guys can see, I mean, Sealite is absolutely the best 
sea light pole on the market. Um, I was so very fortunate to get partnered up with them a couple years ago now. Literally the best guys to work with, Seth and Caleb and everybody over at sea light. So if you guys are in the market for a live scope pole, I know this is not all put together. Please, please give them a shout. Tell them I sent you. We've got all the discount codes for sea light, uh, the stowaway mounts, the graph mount up in the front all in the link descript in the description below so we'll get make this garage even more of a disaster than it already is take the cap off the threads here the reds right into there and yeah since we already talked about it i am definitely going to swap <laughs> the poles out and i'm going to put the brand new one up front maybe because i know for a fact that i didn't i don't know i kept forgetting that uh I told those guys when they sent me this that I didn't need the extension for this one and I'm pretty sure I put Loctite on this extension right here. Normally it's just set screws that keep that in place right there, but I think I just decided that it would be a good idea to put some Loctite on that. So that's probably not coming off, so just scratch everything I said. We're just going to put the brand new one back here as planned. Set that there for now. What else we got in here? All right, let's dig into this bag here because this is going to show you guys what all the options are because on my boat, um, especially when we go up to Green Bay and stuff, I always like to put the travel cover on. Otherwise, the boat just lives in the garage here. But I highly, highly recommend for anybody that goes with the sea light system to go with the quick detach system. That way you've got a plate that mounts right to the gunnel there and you can pop the whole thing out, set it down on the floor or up on your front deck or wherever you mount it. But this is what's going to affix to the gunnel right there. Got some big beefy screws with it. So just set these here, get the quick detach plate out. So yeah, that looks good. Like I said, um, on the front, I have access up underneath the gunnel up there. So on this one up here, I threw bolted those through instead of just using the big screws that it com comes with. But this one back here, I don't actually have direct access under the gunnel because the wire run, that aluminum channel runs up underneath the gunnel along with this plate right here. So this one, we're just going to use the uh, the big screws that it comes with and probably put some Loctite on those too so this guy does not move but that's how that's gonna go but since it's right here we can just kind of show you guys how the whole system works so you just loosen this up right here that's what's gonna give you freedom of motion for that guy and then obviously the quick detach slides right in right there and then you just tighten the set screws or the tension knobs or whatever you want to call them we'll just tighten down one for now and then inevitably what we'll do is i'll probably have my wife come out and we'll just get this guy set so i can mark some holes so i know exactly what's going to be the the spot but yep so now it's out and then your pole mounts loosen this guy up here your pole will mount right into this right here and then same thing there's another set screw tension knob on that side and then the pole sets in there you control it from here and then you are in business so i guess it's time to start doing stuff so we're just going to go ahead and get the transducer run from the black box get that hole drilled into the boat right here so we can get the cable up and then figure out the rest from there all right well um obviously did not check my second access hole back here there's actually two all my other ones from the front of the boat to the back go through one towards the uh the transom and then there's one extra and that one extra just leads into nothing it just leads pretty much into foam when i tried to shove the cable in there so we're gonna try and by try i mean like really try to get this guy up through the first one with all the other cables running through it. So that then has to come up. I'm going to take the speaker uh, access out. I may have to take this whole entire panel off to try and pull that through and then bring that down and then punch a hole right there for it to come and route out this way. So it's going to be a whole thing. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous. So let's get to that and uh, just see what happens here.
So for this next step, we're gonna have to employ my probably least favorite tool in my entire garage. Somebody who we've had a lot of bad times and a couple good times. Her and I have had some good times as it pertains to running all the wires for this install from the console to the back. We got along great, but otherwise the old Harbor, Fate, Harbor Freight uh, fish tape. She can be a little frustrating, so I think I'm gonna try and tie a string to this fish tape and then run it down through that access hole and then tie that string back to this guy and then just pull it through or try it because it is a very tight spot with all the wires going through it down there, but it only takes one good pull and then she comes through, so let's just see how it goes. <sighs> I just want to let you know how much fun I'm not having. Uh, it's been maybe 45 minutes since the last time everybody saw me, but maybe if you can see here, I finally got the fish tape through. I'm just going to skip through the whole portion of me sweating and bleeding and crying trying to get it through there. We finally got the fish tape through, so we're gonna try and connect this guy there and just hopefully get lucky pulling it back down because I don't want to drill a bunch of extra holes here and here if I don't have to. I wanna just do one hole right up here to where we can put that little accessory, that cable holder kind of flush mount thing right there. Um, I mean, it could be, we could make it super janky and we could have the cable coming up through here and then it would be getting pinched by the compartment, but that's just not how I roll. Everything on my boat is super nice and neat and organized and not janky, so wish me luck. We're gonna try and pull this guy through, get that taped on there or something and then say a prayer. So if we could all just bow our heads right now in this video, drop a comment down below and pray with me. I'm not a religious person, I'm just kidding. Let's hope for the best. All right, she's open. Let's see if we can shove her down. Oh my God, it's happening. I think, oh my God, it happened. Oh, so that, I mean, we're talking about a porthole back there that's like this big, but then when it comes up to the edge of the boat on the inside, you've got all that foam down there. So they've literally just cut out, you know, like chipped out like a little section of the foam and it goes at an angle. So I'm glad that I took this side piece off, which I didn't want to do because I'm just weird like that. And I hate taking my boat apart, but I'm glad that I did because then that allowed me to get down and then at a different angle to kind of shove that down. And we've still got the fish tape. And now, like you guys can see here, she's through. She is through. So from there, it's just uh, managing, trying to figure out how I'm gonna manage, you know, the 69 feet of extra cable that it comes with because we don't need any of that. And then hope I have no interference from all the other stuff going on in there. So at least we've got her through. We'll pull it through, get it connected. I'll show you guys that everything works. And then from there, we'll work on wire management and uh I, yeah that's that's it i'm just glad we got it through all right well we've got things pulled through and put together actually did not need to drill a punch hole for the wire to come through or the transducer cable to come through i'll kind of show you guys here so when i was carefully kind of putting everything the panel back together here realized that there was going to be just enough space back here. I'm sure you guys probably can't tell, but there is enough room for that wire to move freely right there with no pinch points or anything. So did not have to drill an additional hole right there, which is nice. So now I've got enough slack in the cable here between there and the transducer that we're just gonna kinda mount the pole here, get the transducer mounted, and then slowly put everything back together so that when we do tighten everything down that there still is no pinch point there. Uh, we can make it work if need be and just kind of drill out on the edge of that panel a little section for the wire to make sure that nothing's gonna pinch or anything like that. But in the meantime, 
it is all good to go. We've got her through. So we're just gonna, like I said, slowly put everything back together and then get the pole mounted and just see where that lands us. But feeling pretty good about it, even though with anybody's baby boat like mine, just makes me anxious to do stuff like this. So we'll see where we end up. All right, so I tightened everything down just the slightest. And as I tightened everything down, that back panel did shift into the cable some. So I am going to just take a big bit and then just take a, a notch out of that little zone right down in there. I'm just gonna take a notch out of that back piece right there, just so it has enough play, because obviously you guys know that you do not want any pinch points or any sharp little opening. So I'm gonna notch that out, just sand it down a little bit, and then we should be nice and free. But that's gonna be hardly noticeable, and I'm sure I'll get over it in about six minutes. All right, I think we're notched out enough and I'm notched out enough too, but whatever that means. We've got this panel cranked down here and you guys can see, well, maybe you can't see, but we've got play in the cable here and that's what we needed. We didn't need a huge notch, but with enough slack here, that's not gonna pinch and it should be fine. Ideally, wanted to be able to do this and just put a notch in there. My first initial reaction was to just punch a hole here, which I guess would have been fine. And uh, I just think that it's better to just do what you can without putting holes all over your boat. So from here, we're gonna get everything vacuumed up, put the speaker on, and then the next time you see me, um, we're gonna take my stepdaughter here to gymnastics and come back and uh, mount the pole. All right, so step number two, um, one of the last and final steps is trying to figure out placement of the pole back here. So initially my first thought before doing everything was mounting it all the way in the back, but realistically that wouldn't make too terribly much sense because you're just putting more distance between the screen and the pole and uh, the customer who are gonna look at the graphs at the console here. So. We're just gonna try and pick a good mid-range spot in between both of my flush mount rod holders here. So that way, when you have two people fishing, whether it's in the forward facing position or the down facing position, there's enough room on either side for both customers or uh, anglers back here to view the screen as well as see their jigs on both sides, whether it's in the down or the forward. So it's gonna be a whole learning experience for me too, mounting this back here, whether it's one person back here fishing, which the forward position is gonna be the most logical or two, which may be on the left and right side of the starboard side of the boat or the, the port side and starboard side, just depending on which way it's facing and how we're set up over those fish. So here is another one of my least favorite parts of any install like this, and it's marking and drilling holes in the gunnel. So let's just get that out of the way because after that's done, the rest is cake, and then this video will be just about finished. All right, boys and girls. Well, we have the holes marked here on the gunnel. And uh, I guess from here goes nothing. So very scary. So I'm just gonna put one hole in to begin with, and then I'm gonna have to put the plate on, and then I'm gonna drill out the rest. But at least I've got an idea where it needs to be. And uh, I'm just gonna close my eyes and pretend like this never happened. <sighs> All right, well, we got that done, so. Let's get a bit on and hope it's big enough here and then put that first guy in. This is what my dad would tell me to do. All right, now we can go in. Okay. Got her a little tight, so we'll go in, we will do the rest. Fast forward, time lapse.
get it in there just a little tight. Do the rest with the screwdriver. Oh yeah, she's, uh, can't really say she's going anywhere, you know what I mean? This one slipped a little bit, but with all three super cranked down, I think we're good. She's in there, so now it's time to go down, grab the pole, and put her on. All right, well, the base is finally mounted to the gunnel, so the worst is over. I feel like there's a lot of worst to this situation. So now all you have gotta do is put the uh, pole on there, get it mounted, and then get the uh, transducer mounted on the pole. The cables ran. One thing I will mention, Sea Light is out of stock of their uh, cable clips that they sell. So in the meantime here, I'm just gonna use electrical tape, but they do make some awesome, awesome cable clips like you guys can see here. One, two, three. They are screw in, they're not snap in, so you can loosen up some of the tension so there's not so much pressure on that right there. But that is one thing we're just gonna have to wait on. So yeah, I feel like as far as everything is concerned right now, minus cleanup, we're all pretty much done. So I'm gonna show you guys how we get this thing mounted and uh, finish it up from there. Okay, she's on there. That's all she wrote. So from here, uh, it's just a matter of getting this guy mounted to the bottom of it and just figuring out exactly how we want the cable ran, making sure the transducer is oriented as it should be. I'm pretty sure, 90% sure, yeah, we've already got a zero degree mount on here, but we do have an extra one. Obviously these things do break, especially with cold weather, but Sea Light also makes a super awesome cable protector that I actually never have really talked about on my channel, but if you guys go to their website, you'll see for the double wire live scope cable, which that's what this one is, the older version, and the single, they've got that super nice little cable protector on there too. So I'm just gonna flip through real quick, get this mounted, figure out the cable orientation as far as slack and everything and how we're gonna run that, but uh, we're looking pretty good, I'm pretty satisfied. So one thing to mention, if you guys are not familiar with the mounting systems of LiveScope, so the zero degree mount for LiveScope is meant for pole mounted systems such as this. The factory LiveScope mount is at an eight degree offset, which is meant to be on the trolling motor. And that's gonna force you when you put it on a pole to drop your bait if you're fishing vertical like that or casting vertical to cast that just a little bit left of the transducer. But the zero degree mount will make it so when you drop your jig right in front of the pole or the transducer, you're gonna be able to see it. So that's why we run the zero degree mount. Highly recommend that for any pole mounted system. Garmin makes one, all kinds of different companies make one. They're like 30 bucks on Amazon, so highly recommend it. So that being said, we've got this lined up with the pole facing this way and that transducer is gonna line up just directly with the way the handle's facing. So we've got that tightened down and uh, everything looks good to go. So we're gonna get the cable run up the pole here and not coiled up like it currently is and uh, just see what kind of slack we're working with. All right, so like I said in the beginning of the video, Sea uh, Light is currently out of their wire clips that they make. So in the meantime, we're just gonna use black electrical tape, which electrical tape is what is recommended from Garmin. Do not use zip ties because there are so many micro cables inside of the transducer cable that you do not wanna put too much pressure on. So in the meantime, uh, until they can send me some more of those wire clips. We're just gonna use electrical tape. So you wanna leave just a little bit of slack in the cable there, like you guys can see. Not a super huge amount, but if you're planning on turning that pole 360, obviously you don't want that wire getting too tight on itself and not being able to run a full 360. So we're just gonna leave a little bit there and I'm gonna put 
that first strip of electrical tape right at the beginning of that loop. And I'm not gonna go super crazy on the electrical tape because we're gonna be replacing it anyway. So that is on there like so. And then however neat you want it, you can just run that all the way up the pole if you need to. But uh, like I said, we're just gonna keep it kinda willy nilly, so to speak, because we're gonna just be cutting it off and replacing it with the super buttery clips that Sea Light makes. Couple wraps on it and that's all you need. I mean, like I said, you can make it as neat or as just kind of willy nilly as you want and that's fine. And again, for me, that's fine. We can tuck that in, but from now, we're gonna get inside the boat and then figure out the rest of the slack so that everything looks nice and neat. All right, well, we just tried to go a little bit janky on the uh, slack management, but you guys can see we just kind of wrap that up and laid it right in the battery compartment there. But we've got just enough slack coming up from the underside all the way up through here um, to just kind of rest right there. I mean, that's about as good as you can do, especially for back here. But again, this is something that like, obviously when we're trolling or running bottom bouncers or something where those rod holder situations are taken up right there that we're gonna wanna bring this guy out and lay it down right along here. So it's gonna be up and out of the way. Another benefit of that quick detach plate from Sea Light. So yeah, as far as I see it right now, uh, this is a wrap. So we're just gonna get everything cleaned up and out of here. I have a guide trip to get ready for tomorrow. But that being said, it is only one person, but uh, while I'm out there tomorrow or right after, I'm gonna get out and try and play around with this rear live scope situation. But since everything is plugged in, we can just cap it off by turning the graphs on here. And with the screens up here, go to home, realize that we have pan optics available back here. Set it up, we can do the same thing on this screen. Hop right on over to pan optics and we have two pan optic screens available for everyone in the back of the boat along with the sea light pole, all my clients, all my guests, everyone that I have on the boat doesn't matter how many people are in the boat, we have live scope in the back and the front. So that's about all I've got for you guys today. Again, we're just gonna get everything cleaned up. I'm gonna get everything ready for tomorrow's guide trip. I know install videos are not the most fun or exciting, especially coming from my channel where it's mostly fishing, but I find that showing somebody the ins and the outs of an install, especially on a deep V boat for somebody that might be thinking they're gonna do the same, I find these to be very beneficial because I personally watch them myself. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you guys have a trip book this winter, especially for winter crappie, looking forward to utilizing the second live scope in the back of the boat. But for anyone that is interested in booking a trip, we are now booked all through the month of December, booking for a January and February winter crappie trip. So hit the link down in the description to book a trip or hit me up for any questions. And uh, for now, I will see you guys on the water for the first test of the second live scope. Thank you guys again so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Okay, real quick though, before we send this off here, I just wanted to show you guys before I get a ton of comments on it, how this thing stows when it's not deployed over the side of the boat. The best part about sea light mounts is that you have so many different stowing options, whether it's up high like this, you can lock that into place there, or like for this one in the back, I was gonna have it resting on the oh shit bars right here in the boat, but instead I'm just gonna have the transducer which has a cover from the bass tank on it resting on the back deck here and that is locked down and that is when we're towing and uh, going in on full pad, that thing is not going anywhere. So again, before I wanted to get a bunch of questions on it, just wanted to bring that to light before we end the video. But again, if you guys are in the market for the best live scope transducer pole on the market. Give the guys at Sea Light a shout. The link will be in the description below as well as my discount code to save 10% on this and all Sea Light accessories in general. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching. You guys have a good one.